Hey everybody, Kyle Shanahan just had his Monday typical routine day after game conference call with reporters, and we'll get to all that, including uh, his take now on what happened on the sideline, the skirmish after Jake Moody's third missed field goal of the game. But first, this is brought to you by Canyon Club Brewery. It's a brewery, a restaurant, a beer garden, all in a great family-friendly atmosphere in Moraga, California. Stop on by. Who knows? You might see me there. And uh, it's coming soon to delivery in Danville. So check that out. Also, thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe. Please like and comment. Um, that would mean a lot to me. And uh, I try to reply to as many comments as possible. Okay, so let's get right to the situation after the game. I don't think Kyle Shanahan had seen, obviously, the highlights of what transpired after Jake Moody missed the 44-yard field goal in the fourth quarter. Uh, Debo Samuel comes out onto the field, and what he says is basically lock in. Uh, don't know all the verbiage that was used, um, all the adjectives that, that might have been used along with that, but that was the general message. And um, Shanahan said that at the time he didn't really think it was that big of a deal, but after he got home, started seeing the highlight shows, and saw how big of a deal it was uh, by everybody who saw the, the video on TV, he figured it was something that he had to address. So he uh, did address it with Devo Samuel, with Tabor Pepper, and most also Jake Moody, as well as some other players on the team. And what Shanahan said is, we squashed it and we're good. And, you know, I asked him, everything's fine. Like that's, um, he's satisfied where, where things are. And he said, he just felt like it was a bit of an overreaction. He says, you never want Debo to throw a baby punch or anything on anybody on our team. But also Debo wasn't saying anything bad to Jake, or at least not as bad as, as it looked like on TV. Um, what, what Debo said after the game was he was a little bit out of character in doing what he did, but uh, you know he said that he would talk to Moody and get past it. But uh, essentially, what Shanahan said was that Debo was going to meet him out on the field and telling him to lock in. And Shanahan said, it's the same thing I tell to offensive players when they drop some passes or maybe make some penalties. You never want to sit there and belittle anybody or try to embarrass anyone. You want to challenge the guys you believe in, and that's how we speak to each other. We tell them they need to focus and lock in because we know you can do this. And so uh, the other part of this is that Shanahan kind of felt like Tabor Pepper the long snapper might have misinterpreted maybe the aggressiveness with which Debo Samuel approached Jake Moody. And what Shanahan said was, I like I like Pep's intentions on it. He's got his kickers back, but I think he interpreted it wrong. Debo was doing, uh, he interpreted wrong what Debo was doing and he overreacted. Debo didn't like that and it got him out of his space and that's where it ended. So no fines, no nothing, um, and the 49ers move on like always after um, well, what I what I would consider uh, you know not a good look. Obviously, I mean we see stuff happen on the sidelines uh, with teammates or with coaches. Oftentimes, it is a sign of dysfunction. Um, you know, you never want to see um, if you're the fan of a team. Uh, players on, on your own team throwing fists at each other or open hands or whatever the case may be, basically that is a symptom of when things are going wrong. Because if things are going good, nobody's uh, doing anything of that nature. And I guess the, the bright side for the 49ers is that Moody basically had the exact same kick, 44 yards to win the game, walk off, uh, 49ers win it 23 to 20. And um, you know, if you're expecting or you're wondering whether there's going to be anything with Jake Moody, the answer is absolutely no. Uh, heading into that game on Sunday, he had made 23 of his last 25 field goal attempts. Now, remember, he was coming off a four week absence with the high right ankle sprain. But uh, what Shanahan said was he missed three kicks. It wasn't the easiest place to kick in. The win was weird. But he came back and he hit his first game winner 
in a walk-off fashion, and we move on to next week with him. So, in other words, um, you know, no issues or no no roster moves or anything like that. Jake Moody will continue to be the 49ers kicker, as I think everybody probably expected him to be. Okay, um, more injury updates. Um, it doesn't look like or don't expect Dre Greenlaw to be back this week. Um, it is now kind of a week-to-week thing. But Shanahan said that uh, Greenlaw will, you know, the anticipation at this point is that Greenlaw will not be uh, open, have the practice window open for him to practice. So another week on that. Injuries coming out of the game. Renardo Green, he's considered day to day with a toe injury. And by the way, all those 49er defensive backs really played well on Sunday as the pass rush wasn't always there. But the coverage on the back end was with Renardo Green, Diamador Lenore, Isaac Yadam, and also Rocky Asin coming in. Rocky Asin had Rocky Asin had a, uh, a a defensive holding penalty, but also had the big breakup down by the goal line uh, that uh, had the Buccaneers settle for the field goal to tie it up, and then the 49ers, of course, moved down the field 41 yards on four plays, or no, was it 39 yards on? Uh, 39 yards on four plays to set up the game-winning field goal. Uh, George Kittle came out of the game with some hamstring irritation, and so they'll see how the week goes for him, and the same goes for the punter, Mitch Wisnowski. His back has flared up on him, and so the 49ers will evaluate some treatment options for him. Charvarius Ward, Mooney Ward, did not uh, go to Tampa with the team he remained in Dallas where uh, the service was for his uh, almost two-year-old daughter who passed away on October 28th. And so there is a chance that Mooney Ward will rejoin the 49ers this week. But Shanahan said he talked to him over the weekend, had yet to talk to him on Monday, but he he anticipated talking to him real soon. So we'll see. There's a chance that the 49ers get Charvarius Ward back in the building this week. Um, I did mention, I posted something on Nick McLeod, uh, who the 49ers signed to the practice squad. Uh, I asked Kyle Shanahan about him. I'm not sure that Shanahan knew who I was talking about, but he did say that, um, you know, he's here with, um, some of the, the, they release Adrian Amos, um, also Chase Lucas, I guess, is going through some things. He's on the practice squad. So uh, four years wanted to bring in a cornerback. But also uh, what I said on the last uh, video was about just the special teams value that Nick McLeod has. I stand by that. I think there's a chance that the 49ers uh, will make a move at least to elevate him for some games here down the road uh, because of his special teams ability. And one of the things that I kind of noted in that was Darrell Luter. Uh, player for the 49ers who's been working at the jammer position. So you have the gunner that's on the punting team whose job is to run down and tackle the punt returner. The jammer is the guy who lines up outside of him or next to him and tries to prevent the gunner from going down there. And so there's no question who was at fault on the muffed punt and what Shanahan said was just that whole scenario is something you talk about a lot. Every team teaches the gunner to push the jammer into the punt returner. So if the gunner hits the punt returner, it's a penalty. But if the gunner pushes the jammer into his teammate, the punt returner, it's not a penalty. And so it's really a situation of awareness that Luter uh, was not aware of where he was on the field, where the, um, where the, uh, punt returner is, and therefore it was he was knocked into uh, Jacob Cowing, uh, a muffed punt, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers recover. So uh, that's where we're at right now. The Four Yards have a day off on Tuesday. That was kind of the the roundup from the game, the day after game conference call for Coach Kyle Shanahan. Day off on uh, Tuesday. Back at it on Wednesday as the 49ers start their preparations to face the Seattle Seahawks on Sunday. Every game is big, but this one is, you know, I guess you could look at it as one of the three biggest games really remaining on the on the schedule when you figure the 49ers are one and two in the NFC West. 
Their only win through the first round was against Seattle. 49ers, there's a strong chance that they're going to have to run the table in the NFC West in the second half of the season to make the playoffs. And so it all starts on Sunday against the Seattle Seahawks. And uh, again, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like, and uh, that's it for now.